Welcome back to CFB Nation. I am your host, Nino Brown. We got a very special interview tonight. We're, we're talking to Reiner Swanson. He's, he's a, an up-and-coming four-star recruit, right, coming out here. It's not just about football with this gentleman. I got a lot of questions for him. He, he's got a lot of interesting things that we're going to touch about. But, Reiner, how are we doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. I just got just got done with school for the weekend, got a, got a good lift in, and now after this, I might go head down to the beach. <laughs> oh, man, that's like the ultimate day. Yeah, you got a good, nice lift in. You know what I mean? Now you're going to go down to the beach. Surfing? You're going to get some surfing? Yeah, I don't think the waves are that good today. I'm just going to go hang out with my friends. But right. hopefully, hopefully tomorrow there will be some waves. All right. Listen, I, I know you're a busy guy. We talked a little bit in the green room before we got on about you got a hectic schedule. So I appreciate you taking the time to do the interview with us at CFB Nation. Thank you. I, I'm super happy to be here. This is my first interview. <laughs> this is this is pretty cool. Well, I, I I have the honor of being the host for your first interview. So kudos to you, sir. I'm even more ecstatic for this one. Thank you, Nino. Appreciate it. All right. I'm going to hit you with a couple of rapid fire questions just to get you comfortable. And then, then we'll get right into it. All right. All right. Cool. What's the number one track in the pregame headphones before you start go to practice, game, whatever? Um, so at the beginning of the season, I thought that um, – so I heard George Kittle say he just likes to play, like, either no music or just quiet, slow music to get your mind, like, focused. All right. But then I tried, like, towards the middle of the season, I tried to do some ACDC and just just crazy stuff, and that <laughs> kind of got me hyped. So I think I, I'm into ACDC, Van Halen, and – I'm just like a classic rock dude. Oh, all right. So we got a yeah. little Ozzy Osbourne in there, a little crazy oh, train yeah. get you going. Yes, sir. Exactly. <laughs> all right. All right. I like it. Uh, listen, George Kittle, I've been watching him for a few years. He he, he goes to a beat of a different drum. He, he's a u- unique individual. Not everything that he does might be for the, for the common folk. So I understand if, if the yeah. silence doesn't get you going before a game, my man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Breakfast cereal 101. You can only have one bowl left of cereal ever for the rest of your life. What are you going with? Probably just – I mean, I don't want to feel really crappy, so I guess just like Cheero, Cheerios or Honeycomb, Honeycomb, Honeycomb. Yeah. Ooh, honeycomb. that's a first right there. I like that one. That's a forgotten gem right there. Honeycomb I, is a gem. I bet I bet everyone said Lucky Charms like Fruit Loops. I got, I got like I Fruit Loops, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, yeah. Fruit Loops, Tricks. Those are like the main ones. And when I ask them about it, it all falls back to the milk because at the end it's like a second dessert or a second breakfast, right? Because it yes, it's got the flavor in it. So, but honeycomb is, is slept on, and, and I'm glad you brought that one up. I want to see. I'm going to be bringing it up to other people in these interviews. I do. I like honeycomb. It's pretty, right. pretty good. I, I know you're a man of surfing. You enjoy it. It's a hobby of yours. We're going to touch on that in a little bit. But I did my research, so I got to ask you: Mrs. Palmer's or Sex Wax? I've never tried Mrs. Palmer's, but Sex Wax is pretty good. It's like a, it's a weird name. My, yeah. my my mom my mom the, she when she first heard of Sex Wax she's like what? I'm not buying you that. <laughs> oh man! I was like no great. no it's just a, it's just a surf brand. I was like and she warmed up to it. Yeah, uh, uh, that that's I, a classic. I, I, Sex Wax right is there. good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now that I got you comfortable, and we talked about a little bit of surfing. I, I know you like to surf. We talked about how you're gonna go to the beach after this. Um, where did you develop the hobby for surfing? And what's more of an adrenaline rush for you, surfing or football? Okay, so I started surfing when I was eight years old. My dad, oh, wow. he's ne- like never surfed before. He so he grew up in Ohio, and they don't surf. They don't like the they don't do the water. They just like roll around the dirt over there. That's what he always does. <laughs> so it was funny how he taught me to surf. But uh, we just went out uh, on my longboard and. Uh, Loved it ever since, but I, I legit started surfing when I was 12, like picking up shortboarding and starting uh, surf competitions. And that wasn't, that didn't work out really well because like I'm a big guy and yeah. I can't, I can't like maneuver the board as well as like these, these like little shredders. But like I could hang, I could, I, I charge big waves and the surfing's pretty freaking fun. I'd say, I'd say like surfing just, it's like a surfing high. Like all I want to do is surf. Which which can get kind of bad because it can get kind of bad because like it's kind of a bummy bummy sport in a way and bummy thing in a way. I just want to I want to balance it out with football, but um, surfing's just on the weekend mostly on the weekends. But every every day in the summer I go football in the morning for three and a half hours and then just the whole day go to the beach and balance it out. 
listen, I know you're a college, you know, high school football player looking to be a college football player. You guys are all in shape, but people don't understand the call workout to surf, right? Like you got to have, a, you, you literally got to be ripped up in, 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 in a, a specimen to be able to hang. Like I was going to ask you short board or longboard, but I think you kind of answered that question by saying you know, you're not with the shredders, right? So I'm going to go with longboards more. Your, your, your guy right there. Um, I'd say a short board, honestly. I just like, I could, I could turn, I could like do, I could, I could do errors and stuff. I could do like a bunch of stuff in the short board. I just can't, I'm not good at competitions. Like, okay, it's hard to explain. It's like a really strategic thing and I'm just not good at that, but I, I, I could hang with everyone. Yeah. So but longboard is, is fun. Is there a chance that you might be the, you know, the new age Kenny Slater in the future or? No, no, no. <laughs> No. no, that was Dude. quick. You were right on with that. Those one. guys are so good. Like you have no idea. I I can't do that. Listen, I'm an old folk. I grew up with Kelly Slater being the dude, and he's been the dude for long, for 20 plus years. He's still kind of the dude, right? Like you're, you're a young buck, and you know what Slater is, so you know he's the dude. Yeah, he's older than my dad, and he's charging like 30, like 40 foot YMA Bay. You might you might not know what that is, but is, is it's that, like is that, that's a big one. That's it's a all time world class wave, and he's just. He's just making these twenty-year-olds look silly. Yeah, but he's he, like he's fifty years old. He's like MJ in the surfboard game. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. All right, all right. You're six five, two forty, six four, two thirty. I've I've seen it different all over the place. And you're a dual sport athlete in high school. You you throw a shot put for track and field. But not only do you throw shot put, you run sprint events. And I can't wrap my mind around a six five, two hundred forty pound junior just. Running sprint events. Can you tell us about the track and field passion and the sprint sprint events though? Really? <laughs> well, I mean, my coaches they they told like football guys have always done track. And last year as a sophomore, I just I I basically started football as a sophomore. Like I played for I played football as a freshman. I got a I got a nose for the ball, but I was a D end. And okay. sophomore year was my first time playing receiver. So um, I just got, I got a good relationship with my coach and he, and I, I just, I've, I've known that track is like the, the next step after, after football season. So I wanted to, I wanted to improve my speed. I wanted, I wasn't very fast as a sophomore. So I think that track really helped me with my, with my like straight line stuff and just being more explosive. So I loved, I loved it so much last, last year, um, track, all my friends were there and, I wasn't the fastest. I wasn't the fastest last year, but after after a lot of training this this year, I I did pretty well, and I I really love spring events and shot put. My man, you are a humble young young man because I watched you on the football field. I watched the, the huddle film. I watched it all. Okay, you literally were separating from linebackers, safeties, DBs. It didn't matter. So. You're fast, bro. Don't don't don't, don't get it twisted. I, I know you're okay. humble and everything, but you are a fast big man for sure. Thank you. I try, I try. I've been man. very blessed. You, you got something special and, and, and you're a young man and you can still you're still growing to be able to have that speed, that power, and that size. You could be a unicorn. I I I, I know it's, it's a common thing people like to say, but like Gronkowski was a uni- was a unicorn. Travis Kelsey's kind of like a unicorn in the NFL. Man, if the trajectory trajectory of what your your growth and how you you know you're, you're, you're trying to master your craft, I, I think you there's a good possibility, man. You could be the next unicorn. That'd be incredible. I've never I've never grown up like wanting to go to the NFL, but then once this all started clicking, like the offers, I was like, I was like, maybe I could do something out of this. Like. I should I should work harder and just I should I should aim for all the way, like the whole the whole thing, the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. So, that means absolutely. a lot that you said that. Yeah, there, uh, I've, I've been I've been interviewing a lot of people. I interviewed Tajay Spears last year. I've interviewed Carson Steele. I, I've interviewed defensive guys. Like we've been down. I, I just interviewed Aiden Childs from Oregon State. Like I watched the film. I see it, man. You jump off the screen. They just jump off the screen. They can line you up. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You, you can be lined up in a fullback, in the H back, in the slot on the outside, in line. You just get it done, and there's it, 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 separation instantaneously. It's crazy. Thank you, thank you. Kudos to you, my friend. All right, well, we already started getting to the football. Let's just dive into a little bit more. This past season, 
I know it was only, you know, your third season playing football, but 83 receptions, 982 yards, 12 touchdowns, including a seven-catch, 120-yard, one-touchdown performance against uh, Cast- Castorano Valley Christian Eagles. Bro, talk to us about this past season with the Breakers. In, in that game in general, I mean, we don't see many tight ends going for seven for 120. Well, um, so the first the first game – we our quarterback he, he 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 was going both ways. He's he's a football player. He could go both ways, oh, and wow. he he messed up his shoulder. So that was, and that was actually our second string. Our first string he's a transfer from Santa Margarita, and uh, he was eligible for the first okay. uh, six games. So the first the first six games we had our third string quarterback in, and it was it wasn't going. I mean no, it was going well. Like we were very surprised at what he was doing. Because he he was he was getting the ball to he was getting the ball to us. There there are a lot of miss miss throws, obviously, and a lot of interceptions. But I love that I love that kid so much for like the bravery that he had, and just he took he took the whole team on his back for the first six games, and we did pretty well. And then so I didn't have like the best the best yardage those first six games, and then when my uh, quarterback. QB one Jackson Colick, he came in. It was just electrifying. It was so much fun. The last, the last games, all the way to the state, the state regionals, which yeah. unfortunately we lost by one. But I, I noticed that that the numbers, the production, kind of increased after like week six, yeah. seven. It was just boop, boop, boop. I mean, I I believe you had a ten catch game in, in between there somewhere. Uh, after that, that seven for one twenty. So I mean, the production just went through the roof once you got your QB one back. So yes, sir. Yes, um, sir. So, so, go ahead, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Yeah, that that uh, game when I had one twenty, it was just, it was just like, it was clicking. That was a, right. that was a nice game, and we were. He was just throw. He got he got me a couple long throws, and I I just said, no way, you guys aren't tackling me. So I just I did a couple stiff arms. So I, I I just we, it was a good it was a good game, and that was that was one of the best games I've ever had. Yeah, I I noticed um. A lot of the times, you when you line up in the slot, right? It's it literally is kind of like one or two moves off the line, and then there's instantly separation. Whether it be a stiff arm, or if they try to press you, you break the press right off the right off the line of scrimmage, and you're able to make that step. And then, obviously, the track background kicks in because the separation increases as you go farther down the field. It's just the size, the physicality of the line of scrimmage. Like, I'm sorry, but. Most 16, 17 year old kids at that age, they're not as as big or as physical as you are. You're just able to throw them around and, and get separation. It just, like I said, it, it just eye popping off the screen to me. Thank you. That's really nice of you to say. Thank you. I, I'm just, I'm just preaching the truth to you, my man. Look, <laughs> let's talk about this recruitment process. I know it's early, but your name has been thrown around a lot. Um, I, I just want to talk about how it's gone. I know you got, you've had visits to Texas, Utah, BYU, mm. Georgia. And Auburn, um, how did the Texas and Georgia visits go? Okay, so first of all, I I would I did not go to Georgia or Auburn. Oh, I, I I said in my tweets that I would, but they it was I wanted to go to Georgia because my friend have you heard of Weston Port? Okay, yep. He he got an offer there, and they invited us on the trip, and I was like, I don't why would I go? Like these these coaches haven't said one word to me, so. Then my recruiter, um, he said, "Yeah, you should you should go. Just check out Georgia. Like, who cares if the coaches haven't responded to you?" And I was like, "No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go. Like, I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to waste my time and my dad's money to fly all the way out to the south." And then, right. So Georgia didn't end up happening, which I'm okay with. I mean, they they already got their tight ends. They're they don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty stacked. And then Auburn. I, uh, we, we just had a long, we had a long, very long, um, we just had a ton of flights before that trip and we were just, we were just like over it. And then I, I, I thought to myself realistically, and I was like, I don't think I'm going to go to Auburn. I, I don't think Auburn's the place for me. So I just told the coach that, um, I appreciate everything that you've done, that you've done for me and the love that you showed me and my family, but. I don't think I'm going to make the trip up there. I don't, I don't want you to waste your time. So I did not go to Auburn. But Texas, that was that Talk was to me. Talk to me about Texas. shock. What was it like? 
first thing I did, we they took me on a campus tour and the golf cart. Yeah, and that was incredible. But then I got a meeting with Coach Sark, with my dad, and his office is insane. Like, <laughs> I thought Dan Landing's office was cool, but his like Coach Sark's is just like mind blowing. I could li- I could live there <laughs> my whole life. It's so cool. He probably does himself. So hey, he has he's got his boots in there. He he's got a. He's got some nice couches. He 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 definitely chills in there all the time. But um, so we had a after the meeting, we just did what do we do? We we had like a tight end meeting, and I went in the meeting with like the whole team, and then we watched practice. Then we uh, got to eat some crawfish, just have a good old southern meal. That was super fun. Talked to talked to the coaches again. Uh, Coach Banks, the tight ends coach, and some of the players got to meet Arch Manning. It's okay. a nice kid. Nice kid. I'm, ex- I'm happy for him. I'm excited. And then uh, got to do a fun photo shoot, just okay. like all the other, just like all the other visits. And that was that was the best photo shoot I've ever done. It was just the the jersey just felt right. Like I don't know. I just I loved it. You you got that look. You got you can you know you got the bleach blonde hair. Right, you got on that uh, the, the orange orange jersey. I call it orange. It's like an orange brown jersey, right? The Texas glow. Yeah, the logo. I saw the pictures. I seen all the pictures because there's one picture that I'm excited about to see because I'm an Oregon guy, right? I I I've been a Ducks fan for a long time before Mariota. Um, I've seen a lot of guys come and go over there. We finally got a dude who's like locked in and Dan Landing, and you mentioned him. I I feel like Dan's the guy out there. Like Dan's Dan. Dan he knows what it takes to be in Eugene. He knows what it takes to, you know, to bring the people in there and make them feel comfortable. I know you got a visit. You had a visit already scheduled, or was it was it this earlier this last past month you went there? I got an official visit June 9th. No, okay, I'm so hyped for that. Oregon visit's gonna be crazy. I, I know you said that you, the jersey at Texas felt right, but you haven't put on the 47 different combinations at Oregon, right? And one That's of them true. jerseys might feel right, and and I know. Dan likes to, to utilize his tight end. Um, Ferguson's going to be that guy this year. As soon as he gets back healthy, they're going to utilize him a lot, and he could get like 40, 50 targets this year. I, I know Bo's gone, but, you know, they got my guy Novoset in there. Austin's a dude, and that would be your QB, my man. So I'm what are your thoughts about, about Oregon? The, I'm not worried about their quarterback situation in Oregon. They got, they're got they going to get their recruits with their NIL program and just the the recruiting that they have there. I'm not worried about the coaching or the quarterback situation. I will be fine at Oregon. Like I would love to go to Oregon. I would love to go to BYU. I'd love to go to Texas. But Oregon is definitely pushing it. Like I'm in. I'm into Oregon 100. percent You got me fired up, my man. Like I'm ready to quack quack it all the way up for the rest, <laughs> of, this, for the rest of this interview because w- that that's the thing. Like we we find wide receivers. We, we end up finding somehow we get running backs that, that, that people to sleep on, like my boy Bucky, and they get it done, right? And, and, and they always they sleep on their quarterbacks. They doubt him. They doubted Herbo. They doubted Mariota. Knicks came from Auburn. They doubted him, and they get it done. And now they got a coaching staff in that's ready to go. Uh, my guy, Dave Ugalage, his son, Mateo's there, right? So, like, they, they're locking in. I would love to see you in – 40 different versions of an Oregon uniform, my man. So I'm excited for that coming up in June. Um, Thanks, Dino. Thank you. Who else you got lined up besides, you know, going out to Eugene? Uh, Texas. The official visit is was scheduled yesterday, actually. It's June 1 Canada. through 3. So the, I know, we're like, right here, this is what we're looking at. Is, is, it, is it really down to Texas and Oregon? Texas, Oregon, and BYU. Like, out of the out of the out of the – Schools that are offered me, I think those are the top three. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, and I just like I love BYU because I'm I'm a Mormon guy. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay, they got a great they got a great vibe over there. I love BYU's vibe. Like there's just there's just so much church, like religious family, and Kalani Sataki. He's incredible. When I when I'm in the room with him, uh, when he had, when, when when we had an interview, me and my dad and him. There was just with some tears were shed. Like okay. he told some amazing stories and my it, the spirit was just strong and I could be one of you was just yeah. Yeah. hundred right. percent. Those so are the BYU, ones that stick for sure. Yes, sir. And BYU, now that they're in the Big Twelve, uh, I know that they're I know that 
<laughs> I know that their uh, program's building, and maybe I could maybe I could be there. Maybe I could be at Oregon or Texas. But out of those three, I got a pretty good like those. I got pretty good options, and I'm very I'm a very fortunate uh, yeah. boy. Listen, the the NFL has seen a lot of Big Twelve tight ends come in come in, so it it's not like you you know it's gonna set you back if you went to BYU because you can still make the make the show coming out of BYU. And, yes, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, BYU got some low key fire uniforms. You think so? Yeah, I, I like the combos. I like the white with the blue. The all whites with the blue is just yeah. it's clean. You know what I mean? It's absolutely clean. I love Jared Hall this year. Uh, I, I think he was a dude. So, Great leader. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I seen him down in the senior bowl. I was able to watch him up close and personal on the field, man. He, he's He's got that juice, so. Yes, sir. Yeah, so BYU and Oregon, like, I think they're very different schools. Yeah. BYU, <laughs> the Oregon has the flash and just mm-hmm. all the money and stuff. BYU just does, like, clean uniforms, not too showy, right. but they're also really cool, and I, I love BYU's uniforms. Okay, I have a question for you. Talk to me. What do you think about the – I don't know if you saw it, but did you see the Cougar helmets? Have you seen? Did you, I haven't have seen, seen the new ones. Talk to me. What? What? Is yeah, it they the- just have. Uh, they were wearing it during the Arkansas game, and there's like a Cougar face on the side of their helmet. And I thought it was cool. Like, uh, I'm not. My dad wasn't a big fan of it, but I thought it was cool. I just, I just want to get your uh, opinion oh. on it. Is it the blue one, the all blue with yeah. the, the airbrush cougar on the side? Yeah, I just pulled that up. That that's fire. I'm sorry. You, you like it? Yeah, I like it with the with the white top with the the three stripe on the uniform. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's fire. That that's BYU kind of stepping up a little bit. They, they're not known for this, the swag. That's a little swag right there. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. They're good. Like they're, it's good. It's rolling up down Provo. Yeah, I I think that might that one might stick. All right, there's only one Ryan Swanson. Well, what makes you so unique compared to other tight ends in the 2024 class? The thing that makes me most unique, honestly, I just I'm a I'm a surfer dude who happened to play football and it worked out. Like I just did exactly what my coaches told me. I never had any dreams of making it to play football. Like my friend, we're we're just in Freshman year, I was in my jacuzzi. My friend has been trying to get me to play football for <laughs> for a couple months. And I was like, nah, I don't know. Like, I'm a basketball, baseball guy. I don't really want to do another sport. And then he told me about the team, about the team meals that we yeah. have every week. And that's literally the thing that got me to play football. So it's worked out pretty well. And it's the thing that makes that sticks out. Uh, I think it's my blonde hair and <laughs> <laughs> I could surf and uh, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Not there's not a lot of there's not a lot of recruits or uh, LDS. So I just I have high values. I I'm very into my very into the church. I'm very into just I just I'm I'm ready to go. I got I got goals and it's on now. Now yeah. that now that football is a priority, I, I want I want to go all the way. I love it. Like I said before, you seem like a passionate, um, <laughs> like like just locked in young man, and I can see it just by the way you handle yourself. I love it. I think you got a bright future. Um, if you had to describe yourself in just one sentence, right? College coach calling you, you know, the dean's calling you, and he asked you describe yourself in one sentence to me. What would it be? I would say, I am. I am very loving and tender-hearted. You know what? And that, that tight end position, you kind of got to be tender loving because you bring everybody together, right? Like you got, you got, you bring the QB in, you bring them into the running backs, and, and you tie them into the O line because you're part of that O line, right? Those are yeah. your dudes. So, so uh, you nailed that, my man. You nailed Thank that you. question with no practice, no own pride. That was off the cuff. You hit that on the head, my man. Thanks, Nino. Thank All you. Right. I, Before I, I let you, good, good, good. I just I'm a just lo- a loving guy and I don't I gotta I gotta work on my my hard edge. <clears throat> my, excuse me. Yep. I gotta work on my hard edge. I I'm just like a, I'm a big teddy bear on the football field. And you, you wear your heart on your sleeve a little bit? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm working on that and I, I'm just a, lo- a loving guy who who happened to start playing football and uh I, I'm excited for the future. Yeah. You, you seem like an easygoing surfer guy who has good family values, right? He, he, he's, he, he understands, you know, 
God in, in church of state, like you get you get all that, and, and I and I commend you to be able to put that all together at such a young age, and you just seem motivated. Like I know you said football wasn't wasn't in the plan, but it's in the plan now, and you, you you're taking the ball and you're running with it, sir. So so kudos to you, my man. Thank you. The, now, do you want to hear the thing that motivates me? Just, yeah, give me it. I want to hear that. I, I live for this stuff. Okay, sorry to throw you off your questions, but no, go. go. I, I wanna... love off chalk, bro. Off chalk is the best because it, it, it's 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 unique and it means the most. Okay, well, I just want I just want people to know this, and I mean it's not that big of a deal. But when I saw, when I first saw Brock Bowers, I saw, when I first heard of him, like I got obsessed, like just searching up his highlights, his Instagram, and his I, his speed. And I just wanted to be exactly like Brock. I just want to be exactly like Brock Bowers. And obviously I'm not like, I mean, I have I had the same hybrid playing, mm-hmm. but I got to work on my speed. He's, he's like a four or five guy. And Wait, four so six? They, I don't know. I ever, All the coaches think that I'm a four six after just watching me run routes. But yes. <laughs> I think I got a four six in me right now. I think you're a low four six man. You might be a high, you know, four five nine, four five eight. I, I I just see it. Like I said to you early in the interview, you pull away from people off the line of scrimmage off one move. That's like wide receiver. Shout out to the man in the back. Hey, Dane, Dane, say, come say hi. That's my brother. Hey. He's a freshman. How we doing, he's, man? Next up. This he's is, next up. <laughs> he is next up. I'm with you. He is next up for sure. Yeah. He's got my cosign. He's, he said he said you're next up for sure. Yeah, you know it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, just, I love the family vibe, man. You, you got it. You got it going on. You got a brother that supports you. You support your brother. It's, yes, sir. it's nothing better than that. Uh, yes. I, I love it. Like I said, you got that speed. I, I know you're a humble dude, and yeah. you might not want to say that, but you got it. You got that. You got that juice. I see it on the field. I've been watching film for, for a few years now. You you got it. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. And, and, and the sky's the limit. But I got one last question for you before I let you go. Can you tell us about this passion for guitar that I hear you have? And is it? And if I had to ask you, Hendrix or Clapton? Ah. Uh. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> I knew I was gonna hit you with a hard one. There. No, you, you did because I like who who's Eric Clapton again? I forgot what what is what band is he? I forgot. Anyway, Eric Clapton is just Eric Clapton by himself. Oh wait, he's a clap. He's the he's Cream. Yeah, he's the band Cream. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd say I'd say Hendrix. He's all time. Like I've seen the videos of him playing guitar with his with his team. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable on his back, upside down. Yeah. <laughs> It was this absolute he's, animal. Like, there's probably no one better, but Eric Clapton slept on, so I had to throw him in there because he's like a top five guitarist. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so I'd say Jimi Hendrix, and my, after what my brother's been playing, you just met him. Like, yep. Dane Swanson, he's been playing uh, guitar for, I'd say, two years, and he's been, he has a band, and yeah. Just watching him rip on the guitar and like all the ladies just like <laughs> go crazy for him. Yeah. yeah. I was like, frick. Oh, I gotta go. I, I gotta go learn guitar. So like four or five months ago, I, I, I picked it up and uh try to play every day. I'm in a gu- guitar class in my school, counts as yes. my art credit, and it's been going pretty well. Uh I'm I'm actually getting I'm getting pretty, I'm getting pretty decent. And if I had a guitar on me right now, I'd try to play a solo. But no, if you were to give me a solo, I would go, I would go bananas right now. You would make my whole weekend, my man. Can you, can what's, what's a song, a simple song that you already got down, Massey? Can you tell us one? Okay, uh, I'd say "Black Dog" by Led Zeppelin, "Sweet Ooh. F.A." by Peach Pit, and just you ain't just, a novice no more. You're not a novice no more, my man. <laughs> <laughs> I I've been I've been working on I I I've grown I've grown pretty fast I've been uh playing the guitar just going every day pretty fast and uh I'm not as good as my brother yeah it's gonna be hard to do that but I'm just I'm just having fun with it so yeah. so he pushes you on the guitar and you push him on the football field exactly exactly there's nothing yeah. better there's nothing better than that right a brotherly love and, and in camaraderie like that where you guys have the same interests and you can just push each other forward. I, I love it, my man. Yes, sir. You, exactly. you got a fan in me. Like after this interview, I did my research on you. I, I dove deep. You know I, I, the surfing aspect. You got a fan in me. 
I am going to be rooting for you no matter what school you go to when you go to the NFL because I'm manifesting that right now that you're going to be in the NFL because you just have that 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 swag. You carry yourself well, and you deserve it. Like, you just, you know, like you're hungry. You're a humble dude. You don't take anything for granted. And you don't see that in this day and age a lot. A lot of people just expect things, like like you, to get things on a silver platter because they're somewhat good at something. You, my friend, that's not how you handle yourself. And I respect the hell out of that. You just got me excited right there. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I could get, give you a little excitement because you gave me some excitement all week while I was breaking this down and watching your film. So, Rhino, I appreciate you. Before I let you go, tell the, the viewers at home something. That, 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 just give them something to quote before you leave give us a quote first of all i want to say thank you to nino this this is so cool um i'm very very fortunate to be on the show and be in the position i am i'd say uh, don't 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 think what uh don't listen to anyone just be yourself and yes. <laughs> just, just be original right just, just be, be you. original just be you because be Ryan Swanson is original, and he is him. He doesn't let anybody I'm change him. him, and he is him. Kimi Neutron. Yeah, I love it, bro. <laughs> Hemi Neutron. No, dude, I might steal that from you. I'm not going to lie. You should. It's that good. Is classic right there. Hemi Neutron. My man. I love that one. <laughs> Rhino, I would love to stay in touch with you going forward, Um, and, and maybe we can bring you back on once you decide where you want to go, and after you make your announcement, we'll bring you back on. We'll talk about it. I'll be, I'll be committing in the summer. So, right, so let's go. I'll be in touch with you. And keep me posted on where you're going, and, and I would love to stay in contact with you. All right. Thank you so much, Nino. I appreciate you doing this one. You have a good night and a good weekend, my man. You too. See ya. Take care. Bye, guys.